it is may 2021 and i have cut my own bangs <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to Shelf Life. This is Simran and this is my podcast Shelf Life. We talk about books, their philosophies, but most importantly, our personal relationship with a book. Uh, as you can <laughs> already guess, uh, cut my own bangs. Um, happened this morning and it was an extremely impromptu decision. Really not much thought has gone into it, but I think it looks fine. So I'm not very disappointed or frustrated i think it looks honestly quite good so that's that what else has been happening um the past two weeks or so have been just um reading and writing as well started writing again after a very long break and you know most of it was obviously the result of this um persistent existential crisis that i've been having um, it comes and goes and it's been coming and going for the past month, I think. And um, yeah, I think <laughs> most of it is because of that, I feel. Even the hair, even the, um, the other bunch of random things that I've been doing, it, most of it is because of the existential crisis. And I think if we, somewhere along the episode, I might just <laughs> give you an Easter egg about it. Uh, but yeah, that's what I've been up to, been reading more. Uh, I've been catching up on some of my non-fiction. I have been reading this, Arundhati Roy's Azadi. Um, it's her newest book, I think, it, the latest one. And uh, I think she wrote it during the pandemic. So there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of her opinion about what's happening during the pandemic and a lot of facts as well and a lot of really strong arguments. and. You know, Arundhati Roy being Arundhati Roy, she has somehow managed to make even non-fiction, um, sort of presented non-fiction in a very story-like manner, which I don't think non-fiction writers have the courage to do or choose to do. So that is really interesting. She's weaved a lot of her, um, the uh, a lot of the narrative from her last book, which is Ministry of Utmost Happiness. She's weaved it into the way that she's forming her argument. And I think, I think as a writer who writes nonfiction, um, especially like research or something of that sort, it is such a difficult thing to do, to, to try to present facts and try to present research and data in a manner that is appealing and also disarming. So I think Anandati Roy obviously does a great job. Uh, pick this book up if you just want to really, you know, read good writing, but also kind of catch up on everything that's happening and read some really strong arguments. Um, I also brought, bought a new book yesterday, which is this one. Uh, it's called The Begum and the Dastan. I haven't started reading it. It's um, by Tarana Hussain Khan. I, I'm going to get into it today, but um, yeah, it, it seemed very interesting. It's about um, like it, it. It's set in pre-independence. In fact, pre-first war of independence um, time. So it, it's around the. It's around 1890s or 18 1800s. Let's just call it that. It's it's uh, set in 1800s India, pre-partition, of course, and it, it the the the. F- core of the story is um, this woman who is a tawaif, which is a dancer and a courtesan is another name for it and, and her story and her relationship with the Nawab and also with the culture around her, it, it, it really presents that world, uh, the world of tawaifs and the, the culture of courts and courtesans and, and, and the relationship that they had with um, kings and and just what life was for them and I- it's something that we really don't hear about enough I mean I know that we've had Devdas and we have like a lot of these other movies that talk about it but 
again it's not really enough representation for their lives and for who they are and what that world was like so i'm very 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 excited to read this book it also has elements of or- oral storytelling it also has the present mixed into it somewhere um the present world and the present times mixed into that narrative so it's going to be very interesting i hope and um yeah i'm excited to read it i've also sort of been catching up on um some poetry as well i was reading sufi poetry yesterday um i went back to rumi of course and just you know spent some time going over it and i realized how much i love it uh, and how much i miss it you know there's something about sufi poetry that's very very distinct uh, and and really nothing else compares to sufi poetry so i if you are someone who's never read it um i mean it, it's not really possible that you haven't but if you are someone who's never read it make sure to go ahead and check that out um that's about it and i think i think i've also sort of try been trying to read shantaram again i've been rereading shantaram uh by gregory david roberts i've kept it right here um i've been rereading it because i really miss bombay um i really miss south bombay in particular i think you know i like i said i used to travel a lot pre covid to south bombay because that's where college was and that's where a lot of other things were and i think for me i just loved walking around and seeing everything and just just being in that uh place and i haven't been there for about 2 years now almost so it's really i've been missing it a lot and especially it coincides quite um uh, you know weirdly with this time that i'm going through which is you know i've just finished a year of college another year of college and i'm going to be entering the last one so it's a very weird time for me which is why i've been you know wanting to go back to that book again and shantaram again if you've not read it it's a classic book and it's everything about bombay if if you are some way who someone who loves bombay and wants to re- and and really feels that satisfaction when you, when it shows up in novels uh, or even movies you know just old school bombay narratives you will 100% love that book um and again it's it's really fast paced it's really quick uh the language is quite easy but also very effective so pick it up it's huge it's humongous it's going to take you a million years to finish but that doesn't matter you can always go back to it whenever you want and it's so good that it it'll actually keep you hooked so <laughs> um that's about it that's recommendations for you for this week um if you want to keep reading more that's what you should check out and moving on we're going to get into our book for the week our book for the week is lela or leela i'm not sure but i personally think it's lela so a book is lela by prayag akbar um and it is prayag akbar's debut novel um and lela is a dystopic novel it, i think it released not released it, it was published i think 3 years ago probably i think it was published in 2018 if i'm not wrong and i read it of course when it came out but i just you know it just struck me that i could probably do an episode on this and tell people to read it if they haven't so lela released in 2018 is a debut novel by prayag akbar but um it, it is phenomenal work to say the least and i think i should probably tell you beforehand that it's probably not everyone's cup of tea um just given the content of the book and and just everything that it grapples with again that's the thing with dystopic novels right you just you don't know how much is going to push you i mean y- you you enter it with the premise of okay this is going to be a little scary this is going to be like your worst nightmare right that's how you start that's how you watch horror films as well you go in knowing that this is going to be scary this is going to you know shock you and make you just a little bit disturbed but with dystopic novels especially novels in particular you really don't know how much further it's going to go and the impact that would have on you when you're reading it 
so given the times that we're living in right now and everything that's happening you are more than welcome to not pick it up right now if you think that something like that would something that could push you right now a little bit towards the edge um is not good for you for your mental health right now so definitely don't read it if you think you're not in the head space to just go there right now uh but moving on those who do wish to read it i can tell you a little bit about the book so lela is set in a dystopic world i think so the 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 place that it's set in is not named throughout the book it's an unnamed city but i am pretty sure it is supposed to be mumbai it, it's supposed to be india and i think the city is supposed to be mumbai but again that's like i'm assuming that i'm it's not written anywhere in the book but i think it is that um and you know it's this topic in the sense that higher technology has completely taken over so this is a world r- that has really everything every kind of technology that you can think of every you know ar vr technology that you can think of and um uh, it has that and but also you know divide is a huge part of how the city is formulated so people are fragmented and and divided according to their communities according to their you know according to the identity that the state wants them to have and um so the the city is you know broken up into sectors and it's broken up into just literally zones that certain communities can live in and can travel in and outside of that you're not allowed to mingle you're not allowed to move really um it's also a city that is really really um engulfed by pollution and all sorts of things so it's definitely not a happy city <laughs> in no um sense of the word there's a lot of things that are happening and prag akbar makes it very clear that this is something that it, it, you know it's not a far off world it's something that could happen right now um it's something that is real that we are literally inching towards so in fact i think in in the blurb of the book it says that you know it's a digitized city and it's n- somewhere in the near future this is going to happen so it's very clear that uh this is intentioned this is intentional for where we are living right now and how we live right now um so yeah so that's the overall view of the city and again there's a, a state and there's a council that sort of manages everything and they are extremely obviously um uh, extreme right possibly very they rely very heavily on propaganda they rely very heavily on dividing on class section on 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 keeping people in boxes um and uh, and a whole lot of propaganda also so you know that's that's the whole situation and at the center of it is a mother her name is shalini and she lives in the labor camp so she is essentially a slave and she works for these big people she works in construction she 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 is in that job and um, it's basically shalini's story and she is the one reciting it she's the one narrating the story and her only purpose in life her only purpose to live to 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 do anything is to find her daughter lela Lela uh, went missing or rather was kidnapped 16 years ago when Shalini and her husband Riz um by the way Shalini and Riz are an interfaith couple if you didn't already <laughs> guess that but um Shalini and Riz had a party in their house one evening and uh, they kind of got together with their friends and all of that and some men who belonged to the state who belonged to the state's official party uh called the repeaters they barged in and they sort of just caused a lot of mayhem and since then shalini has been you know relegated to the the labor camp she works there and separated by her family and sh- she can't find lela she doesn't know where lela is 
Um, it's been 16 years to that. She is still in the hope of finding Leila. So that is what the whole story is about. And again, let me make it very clear. The, the whole novel is Shalini's story. And it's her memories. It's her voice. It's her narrative. So it's not very plot driven in the sense that there's not something active that is happening. There, it's not like a sequence of events is following throughout the book. It is Shalini's narrative. It is Shalini's headspace. It is everything that she thinks about, everything that she is rehashing in terms of her past, everything that she's going back to, and all of that stuff. So you really learn more about her situation. You learn about Riz, her husband. Uh, you learn about her daughter, all of that through, you know, her just thinking about it and her going over her memories because that's honestly all she has, right? So, you know, you there's a, a lot of the book is about Riz and Shalini's relationship as well, you know, how it progressed, where they came from, um, how the world, how their city was before it got taken over and it it became this dystopic city so you also see a glimpse of how they were back then and now how they are and, and everything you know Leila and how Leila was like what Shalini's life was before this happened so it's a very very interesting book in that sense because it really opens you up to again memory as a character memory is a character in the book memory has its own persona its own effect its own whims and fancies sometimes it you know it, it 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 is so violent and so vivid that it hurts Stalini it, it hurts to remember it hurts to go back to what was but sometimes it's also a solace it's also a friend it's also a companion it's something that she carries around with her everywhere she goes because it literally helps her survive so memory is a very important character in in this book and also in a lot of books that we've read over the past couple of months right we've, we've talked about it endlessly um but this book is especially memory plays a big role because there's not much happening in present time um it's mostly memory and you know that was that was one of the most interesting things for me because i think you might already know it by now but leila actually has a spin-off show as well so it's been made into a Netflix mini series, I think, which may or may not have a season two. But um, it was made into a show, and I actually watched the show before I read the book. But and and so I kind of went into the book with the show in mind. I thought, you know, everything that happened in the show is probably how it happens in the book. But then I realized that that is really not the case. Um, don't get me wrong, the show was brilliant. It was really well made, you know, great actors, all of that. Uh, it made the world very believable, but it's really different from the book, you know. Um, the show really doesn't have that element of memory, you know, being a character. Memory is strong. Memory is something that keeps coming up again and again. There's a, a lot of flashbacks. There's a lot of uh, moments where she breaks down because she thinks of something, but it doesn't play as big of a role as it does in the book. And also, in the show, it is plot driven. It is, there, there's a lot of twists and turns that are happening. There's a lot of, you know, subplots that are going on. But the book, again, is not really like that. The book is simply Shalini's story. It's simply her narrative, everything that she's thinking about. And honestly speaking, it's the first time that this has happened, but I felt that the book and the show complemented each other so perfectly. If you're someone who's seen the show and, you know, you're not reading the book, it's a big mistake because I really think you should. Um, the show, everything that you get from the show, the pace, the, the, the quickness, the, um, the highs and lows, right the the world that you see the, the the twists and turns all of those big moments that you get from the show um this the little moments the the moments that kind of reach somewhere deep inside the moments that really make you think the stuff that really gets to you literally the heart of the show the heart of every character shalini's mind is something that you get through the book 
and i thought that was such a cool thing to do to make these two really different but also very complementary so yeah that was you know that was something that i wanted to say about the show and about the book i think you really should read and review both of these things both of these forms of art and you know maybe you can maybe you can actually do this intentionally maybe you can sit down and try to make notes when you're watching the series and also compare it to your experience of reading the book and see what kind of differences you experience see what you felt when you were watching or reading um essentially the same piece of art so i think that could be a very interesting thing to do i mean you could explore a lot about yourself you could think about you know why you felt a certain way or why you liked one more than the other if that is the case you could really do that i think it's it's a very cool thing to try out so <laughs> yeah um watch the series i think it's on netflix um that's where i watched it i think 2 3 years ago so check it out i think it's really cool to do that i think another thing that i wanted to talk about is um you know the book obviously because like i said it focuses a lot on class it focuses a lot on sections on sectors on zones uh on on forbidden territories it focuses a lot on those um and the the sense the notion of purity right is is obviously you know at the very core of everything that's happening so the the you know the sectors are delineated everything is kept a certain way because uh of this notion of purity in fact there's this scene actually it's not in the book but it's i think it's in the show where um shalini who's a slave essentially a a, a maid uh, who is you know going to work at this really big society complex she's going to work at this pretty huge um uh, you know societal complex um there's a scene where all of these maids and all of the drivers and all of the laborers essentially have to go through literally scanners uh again very high tech scanners they have to but they have to go through these scanners before they enter the building um and they have to there's a scene where you know she has to open her tiffin um uh, and there's a man who who just you know the the guard essentially she he pokes his finger inside her food and all of that so that the notion of purity and preserving purity is huge in the book and it's it's funny because obviously that's a mirror of where we are right now <laughs> and the world that the india that we're living in right now where purity matters obviously a lot you know you you read instances of interfaith couples being banned being separated being jailed um you see stuff about how live in couples should not be given the right to live in because they destroy the fabric of society you see stuff about how maids maids in fact i mean that that's the biggest example you can give um a lot of maids are not allowed to eat from the plate that everybody else in the house eats from they're not not allowed to sit at the table to eat they're made to sit down um or even sometimes because all of this is so internalized and all of this is so routine um they don't even question it a lot of them just know that that is how it has to go you have to sit on the floor so again it, it's a very it brings that out to the forefront and it 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 doesn't question it um it doesn't become preachy in that sense but that's the best thing about this topic books they're not preachy they're not you know that that something like this is not being presented to you so that the author can tell you that this is wrong um the author is presenting this to you as is they're asking you to judge it or not to judge it they're asking you about what you think um they make you root for the characters that's essentially what this topic books do uh, the whole purpose is to make you root for shalini is to make you root for her to win is is for her you know to to root for her to somehow survive to somehow get out of this uh to find her daughter to find what she's looking for to to find some semblance of 
victory and triumph right but there's also another um book that has a very similar arc in fact i felt like these were extremely similar books not in the terms of you know the the content but the just the way that it's structured and the characters are formed uh we the living by ann rand we have talked about it on the podcast before i felt like these two books were extremely similar in the sense that they both have this one um woman at the center of it at the helm of everything who is literally you know seemingly f- single handedly fighting the entire state <laughs> and she's fighting oppression she's fighting for her own freedom she's fighting for her own individuality she's fighting for someone she loves um she's fighting to be saved and to save herself so i felt like these two books were very similar in that sense and um but here's the twist or here's the stuff that gets complex um in ain rand uh ain rand in we the living um you know that kira who is the central character who is very oppressed who has to work so much and essentially is also a slave um you know that she had you know she she had a history of aristocracy on her side of the family so her family were uh, aristocrats and she was a wealthy um person as well she was the daughter of a very wealthy man and when the dictator dictatorship of the proletariat happens in soviet russia where the whole revolution happens and 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 the proletari- the proletariat um become the state where it's literally called a dictatorship of the proletariat when that happens kira obviously becomes poor and she's struggling and all of that but again you see the element of um sympathy is manipulated here because you don't know if you're supposed to sympathize with kira um given the fact that she was privileged she was wealthy she was also possibly at fault for a lot of you know injustices that were happening and you know kind of the same situation is happening in lera as well you realize through her narrative through her story um from everything that she talks about about her past life past life um you know that shalini was also wealthy and she was also privileged and she also uh was in a lot of way ways casteist in a lot of ways a purist um she also does a lot of questionable things throughout the book so you you know the author is again he's challenging you about your belief he's challenging you about where you stand about your position and prayag akbar does such a great job with it like just as ayn rand had done she's done a f- phenomenal job with you know just manipulating sympathy and and how far can you go to root for this character you know how invested are you and that's what happens with charini as well you 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 know you sympathize with her but you don't know how much and you don't know if you should and how far can you take it and that's essentially what the whole book is centered on it's about you it's about where you stand what do you believe in what do you think is right what do you think about everything that's happening so it literally you know people think that dystopian books are you know this magnum opuses of uh, how to set things up and about this imaginary world about the setting about its believability but it's really really not about that it's about you it's about you the reader and how you interpret things and about how you want the end to be in fact in you know lela i'm not going to give you any spoilers but the end is quite vague it's it's quite uncertain and so that again forces you to think of what you would want the end to be and i think it's really genius writing it's extremely genius writing where you repeatedly have to ask the question of whether the character that you're rooting for is a victim or a perpetrator because in a book like lela shalini is either of the two she can't be in between there's no in between 
everything is black and white right everything is honestly everything is black it's it's not even white there's no good uh happening <laughs> but like it really makes you question that and and throughout the book that's what happened with me as well i struggled to put her in one box i struggled to see her as completely a victim i struggled to see her as completely a perpetrator so maybe if you read the book and and you can figure that out for yourself as well maybe we can have a conversation about that you know like how do you read books do you see characters as just black and white or do you kind of convince yourself to see them as gray as having good and bad of everything but what happens when you read books as complex as these you know does that still stand do you still think of them as gray i don't know i mean these are huge questions to ask but i think we could really get into this conversation and it would be very very rewarding for all of us so we could learn a lot um so yeah i think that's about it that i wanted to talk about with respect to this book of course there's so many more discussions about privilege about tab- the you know the whole concept of tables turning about you know when you're at the top you go to the bottom what happens at the bottom when the and what happens when the bottom goes up um i what i said make no sense but <laughs> i i hope you understood um so yeah the book is a lot about tables turning and about the dictatorship of the proletariat and it's also a lot about propaganda and in fact i was watching an interview where prayag akbar was being interviewed and he was asked you know what would happen if you were in a state like the state of um lela like the state that exists in lela the government i mean i mean the the council and all of that if you existed in that world if you were put into that world what would be your job like what would you picture yourself doing on a day to day basis to earn things and he said that that's very you know it's very tricky but he said that he would probably be a propaganda writer like a campaign sloganeer uh like a campaigner like someone who writes you know slogans for propaganda campaigns <laughs> and i thought that was very interesting cuz i think probably all writers and creators would end up doing that so yeah um really cool book tell me if you are planning on reading it tell me if you want to have a conversation about it if you've already read it make sure to watch the show as well so that you can ca- kind of compare and see which one you like more see what you learned from it and yeah i will see you next week we will be discussing another book or we'll probably have a guest thank you so much for joining and yeah i hope you have a great week thank you now i